Okay, so I've had plenty, 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 plenty of clients report immediate relief. In fact, they'll say, you know what, I started not to even come back for feedback, but you told me you like to know how these things come out. Um, but sometimes just, just simple postural adjustments. It's like, you know, I just do what you said. And I just, you know, they just make it sound so easy. It's like, well, I wish I could just do what I said. <laughs> I'm only good from my side of the table. Um, okay, and so I started making these cranisms. So NCVs or nerve conduction velocity tests, they don't impress me much. Because here's the thing. I've had clients where it said it was completely negative, which is pretty common. I mean, if, if it's postural positional and it's temporary, that makes sense that the nerve conduction velocity test was negative, right? So I've had negative, I've had patients where they said it was mild, moderate, and oh my God, severe, the worst I've ever seen. And they all seem to respond and cure just as quickly and just as well. Just saying. Um, and I don't believe much in distal nerve entrapments anymore. That's part of the reason I no longer do nerve gliding or stressing or flossing or any of that stuff. Um, the postural strategies, you know, so, so you're doing the distal comfort measures until those symptoms start to resolve. At the same time, you're working on the, the cure, which is mostly postural, you know, at your desk, sleep positions and whatnot. So, I mean, the good news is we got control over that, right? This is fixable. We do not need the orthopedic surgeon for this. Okay. So, um, this is, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this website, hubpages.com. Anybody can write anything, and believe me, there's plenty of trash there. <laughs> um, but this is my article on ice packs and just the general benefits for ice for pain and swelling. This one is um, particularly on like ice pack and ice pack options like the alcohol and ice slushy, the Cairo syrup um, ice pack, which patients love because it's a soothing texture like our gel packs in the clinic. This is my um, article on, um, on just the, the quick tips, not a lot of where's and why for's, but just some real basic ergo things. And I forgot to put in contrast pads, but um, if, when you go here on the, the top right of the page, there will be my picture and a link that says RM Crane, which you, you hit on that and it'll take you to my profile. And then once you're on my profile page, same thing, you got a little picture on the right. The search bar above searches the whole site. The search bar below searches me. So you just, you know, you go to my profile page and then under my picture, you just type in contrast pads and that article should come up. Okay. Okay, he's going to post the link somehow as if I'm magic. Oh, in the heel bars? Okay, you gonna post them where? Oh, you put it up. Well, we can put it on screen, and then you'll have to copy it down. Okay. Okay. So myofascial trigger points. Okay. So, okay. Any questions on thoracic outlet? I mean, I kind of expected that to be the biggest piece. So we're a little under half of our time, but we should be okay. So that's that's weird, but if you if you so she knows someone who who her both of her arms, like the whole arm, feels numb, falls asleep when she sleeps and when she's walking a patient with a gate belt. Mm -hmm. But I mean with the gate belt she's probably still Yeah, well yeah, because one hand like because her hand will start falling asleep. But you know, it kind of goes back to that sometimes, sometimes there's more of a correlation with obesity and diabetes and all these things. Um, man. You know, we, we could talk. I mean, I had a girl whose arm turned purple when she was working this um, temporary job in a factory, which was very unaccustomed to her. You know, her arm went cold and turned purple. So naturally, the PCM sent her to the occupational therapist. You know, did I say her arm turned cold and purple? Um, so I sent her to the vascular surgeon who sent her to yet another vascular surgeon who, who um, specialized in thoracic outlet. He did a ruse for one minute. He did all kinds of vascular tests. They did not find anything. I looked her up on our system because I can. She was in Germany at this point. I encountered her at Scott. She was in Germany, and she still 
had the symptoms, but she used the strategies that we had taught her to, to minimize the occurrences and the severity. And so all of these specialists and doctors never figured out, to my knowledge, what was going on, but she did use our strategies to minimize it. One of the things that she said was she, could, she knew how much weight she could carry, and so the problem was she had a child in base housing. They wound up on a second floor or something, and so she, she was arguing to get a ground floor because she knew her limitations. Um, it's, you know, sometimes we, you know, we can't fix everybody, right? We cannot fix everybody, and even though for the most part I really believe my patients and I trust them, there is that aspect that not everybody really wants to be fixed either. Um, so the myofascial um, trigger points, these patients are usually going to present with, um, with tendonitis. Some of them may present with, with the distal nerve entrapment provisional diagnosis, like especially cubital tunnel, but for the most part, they're going to um, prevent, uh, present with tendonitis, and their symptoms follow the dermatomes. If you're not familiar with dermatomes, we got a nice netter slide here coming up. Um, so here we go. So here is dermatome 6, and this is symptomatically what I see the most often. I will see clients um, come in for tennis elbow and the lanes. And then next most prevalent I see is C8, and it might present as a, um, a golfer's elbow, medial epicondylitis, but more often than not, it's going to prevent, um, present as ulnar nerve symptoms. I don't really usually see too much um, of the others, and then if we go to the other side, um, you know, this would be our median nerve restriction. I just, I, I just usually see the C6 and C8 presentations. And, um, let's see. So here's showing you more on that. So here's, um, here's median uh, from the dermatome standpoint. Uh, see all this red, all this is radial. Okay, so. Um, okay, so far and away, far and away, the biggest culprit is the levator. Um, and anybody know where the levator attaches? Besides the, it attaches, actually, wait till you get that slide. I got another nice netter slide in here, we'll talk about it there. Um, but this is, this is the most um, common culprit that I see. And again, C6 dermatome, most common, uh, C8, and then you know, maybe occasionally C6, 7 that I'll see. Okay, so here. So this, this is Levator right here. Okay, and it's going to go up under and attach. I think not to the base of the skull, but like to those um, first couple of um, spinous or transverse processes. Um, so your levator, if you find, find the first find the vertebral border of the scapula, because even if you're not a shoulder expert, you poke around enough, you can find, you know, have them, have them do this, do this, do this, do, you know, you can find this, this vertebral or medial border of the scapula. And then kind of come across and you can find the scapular spine. So, so like right at this point, just above here, so here's your supraspinatus, so here's going to be the attachment for your levator, and it's going to go up. But now this is not the first thing you're going to feel, right? That's up under trapezius, okay? So you come up, or I go around to the back of your chair, and I kind of put my hands off like this, and so yeah, most people, their trapezius, everything's globally tight, but I can feel that, that ribbon of that levator you know, kind of standing out, and so and then you like poke on that levator, and you're like, oh, how'd you know to do that? Um, sometimes, uh, and this certainly doesn't happen, you know, 50% of the time by any means, but sometimes you poke on that levator, and they will have pain, like, shoot immediately to their decor vein spot or their tennis elbow spot, and they think you're like the smartest or the <laughs> most voodoo-ish person they've ever encountered. <laughs> Um, okay, here's, uh, this is not me, this, this is a video that I stumbled upon on YouTube, someone, I think, I want to say it's a PM&R doc, um, but, but anyway, someone with a whole lot more credentials than me saying the same thing that he finds in his practice that this levator is a huge culprit for, you know, distal symptom referral. Okay, so this is what I tend to see most commonly. The queer veins with the, the primary differential on that being the dorsal sensory nerve, radial sensory nerve, um, tennis elbow, and then the differential being radial tunnel, and then cubital tunnel. Um, I see cubital tunnel, as I said, more often than I see tennis elbow as the referral, you know, the referral diagnosis. 
Okay, so once again, you got to really figure out for yourself what is and what is not the queer veins and tennis elbow and all that stuff. Okay, so it's kind of a you know, rule out. After you've really satisfied yourself, and you know, first you got to educate yourself, and then after you kind of satisfied yourself, okay, this does not fit with tennis elbow, but I'm going to give you a few cheers, okay? Um, so, for one thing, the history does not fit, okay? Tendonitis symptoms do not come and go. They come, anybody disagree? They come and they stay and they stay and they stay and they stay, okay? If you've got tennis elbow, if you truly have tennis elbow or the veins, those things hang around like 12 weeks is nothing. Okay, so if they say, well, you know, some days are better than others, it kind of comes and goes. No, your tennis elbow person already knows that they cannot reach and grasp and pick things up. They already know that. They don't do that. De Quare veins is a little trickier because it, it's not so cut and dry. It's like it just kind of depends on getting that just right combination of your ulnar deviation and usually wrist flexion. Um, but some things they can pick up and re you know, reach and grasp, but they kind of get that combination of movements and they get the big jolting pain. But it's every day. It does not come and go. Okay. Um, another key is that the patient didn't respond to the tennis elbow treatment plan or the Decorimate treatment plan. You know, I mean, I rarely, rarely have someone come in and say their symptoms are absolutely not any better whatsoever unless they absolutely listen to not one single thing that I said, but I'm pretty convincing. I, I'm even surprised at my own compliance from patients. Um, so that's another one, okay. Um, again, the applied anatomy is the cement. You know, it, it really makes sense out of the provocative test and the activity restrictions. Um, okay, the other key point is, is the story. You know, plenty of doctors say, well, you know, 75 to 80 percent of the diagnosis is with the patient's reported history, but then they don't really, they don't really embrace that. You know, I mean, as a provider, you know, when, when I'm praying the patient, you know, they're probably rolling their eyes behind my back. But when I'm praying the provider, talking to a doctor, you know, they love to do the viral thing. Um, and so, um, I think that this really is true. And doctors just, it's like an academic activity in their head. They just say it, but they don't really embrace it. But, but truly, um, most of the time, uh, I've got my diagnosis before I even touch the patient and have to do very little touching. Um, so your provocative tests, okay. So with the provocative tests, in here we're talking about ruling out your, your actual distal diagnoses. Um, again, show and tell. You know, so like this whole thing about, you know, is the resisted uh, middle finger <coughs> extension, is that a radial tunnel <coughs> test or a lateral left test? I use all of the radial tunnel and lateral left tests for both. Mm -hmm. And I have you show and tell. And if I'm doing the lateral epicondylitis test, but you point to the radial tunnel spot over and over and over again, I'm not going to put down in your eval that you had 